by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the fullness of Christ. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which can destroy the creatures of God? I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, oh Freddy. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me get that. I'm, I'm sorry. I'll Give pay for the that. cleaning. I really will. You might have to pay for the whole suit. Look at this. Wet. I'll, I'll get something wet. Freddy. Can I help you? Uh, I'd like to see Lieutenant Hogan. Well, he's out for dinner. Perhaps I could, uh... Carson! Wait. Uh, right. I'll be back. Wait. Oh! Look, oh. look at this. I can't... I hope I did okay, Father. I was so nervous, I almost forgot what I was supposed to say a couple of times. You'd think I was the mother, not the godmother. Are you nervous, Alice? That's the last thing I thought I'd ever see. You know what I mean. I wanted to do it right. I know what you mean. You did fine. I sure hope she did. That's all she's been talking about all week. Okay. It's an improvement. It's all she usually talks about is you. Oh, yeah. Hey. See you later, kids. <laughs> Come on, Mike. Hey, Emilio. Missed you at practice tonight. I got an excuse, Father. It was my brother's baby. I know, but next time you gotta tell Father O'Malley you have priorities. Just don't tell him I told you that, huh? that life never lets you carry on with your old values and beliefs unquestioned. I'd gone the greater part of my life believing that baptism was a celebration of rebirth, a family controlling its destiny by bringing new life into the world. Did we have to be reminded that anyone's destiny is no more controlled than the roll of the dice? That the very act of celebrating new life can be turned into another opportunity for life to show us how fragile we really are. Maybe in the grand scheme of things it makes some kind of sense but I'm not liking it one bit. Hi, Father. Hello, Jim. I guess things have moved into your belly work, haven't they? I'm afraid so. Father O'Malley, it's Detective Kevin O'Brien. Father. Father and I go way back. Your lieutenant here was my star altar boy for six years, even after the incident with the sacramental wine in the sacristy. <laughs> I thought he had forgotten about that by now. My specialty is forgiving, not forgetting. Father, I understand you knew the girl who was killed. Alice Miller. She came into our drop-in program about three years ago, and she did uh, the voluntary work for the parish for the last two years. Did she have any special problems we should know about drugs? No, she moved with one of the gangs, but uh, that was almost two years ago. I understand she was with someone just before she was run down. Emilio Sada, a boyfriend, a good boy, a star player on our basketball team. How's he taking it? Badly. In another year, would have seen them married. Kevin, I want you to get this Emilio kid down to the station. Anything he remembers, I want it in a report. Okay, it was uh, good meeting you, Father. Why should it happen? A nice girl like Alice, so much love in her. These things never should happen, but somehow they do. Stand with us. The hey, what's the story? Oh, right. Hit and run. Girl killed coming out of the church. Was that all there is to it? Uh-huh. What's Hogan doing here? Good job. Since when do lieutenants come down and check out hit and runs? He's had his lights off. It all happened so fast. All I could see was Alice getting hit. 
falling. How in God's name can anyone hit and run? I'm sure God didn't have anything to do with it, Father. Well, maybe I had better ask him. <laughs> the priest is a friend of his, huh? I'm just finished performing a baptism, the godmother walks out of here, and some crazy runs her down. When I know more, you'll know more, cross my heart. Frank. Well, it's a great way for old friends to get together over a fresh tragedy. And why not? We do it all the time. Thanks, Father. If you think of anything else, give us a call. Otherwise, we'll be in touch. Sure. Yeah. Did you get anything? Good description of the vehicle. Nothing on the driver. What do you think we got, a drunk driver? Maybe. Whatever it was, I want everything put in a back burner until we get this cleaned up. O'Malley's got a lot of programs around his church. He keeps a lot of kids like Alice off the street. The longer this hangs around, the more dirt will rub off on those programs and on him. I want whoever it was who killed that kid fast. We'll do what we can. It'd do better. Now, were you and Alice having trouble with anybody? We stopped having trouble after we left the Terminators. Now, Father O'Malley said she hadn't had anything to do with that gang for a couple of years. Yeah, but they don't give up. Especially Rico. Alice used to go with him. This is uh, Rico. You have a last name? Rico Navarro. He calls the shots. It's a long time to hold a grudge. Daddy. Yeah. Did you get anything? Uh, well, no, so far it's a hit and run. He's a very upset young man. He thinks it may have something to do with a gang. Ran Alice through the computer. Comes up pretty much as Father O'Malley said. A couple of arrests for uh, possession, shoplifting, ties to one of the gangs, and it all stops a couple of years ago. Since then, there's been nothing but a traffic violation. Uh, what was the violation for? Well, it was an accident driving the parish van. And the case went to court, and she was cleared. Nothing. Well, all you've got is a gang she hasn't been with for two years. That is nothing. I'll just find something. Can I help you? I'm looking for the lieutenant. Oh, I'm sorry, he's not here yet. Uh, perhaps I could be of some assistance? No, thank you. It must be Lieutenant Hogan. May I wait? Oh, of course, of course. Uh, why don't you sit down here? Can I get you something? Uh, coffee, uh, tea, magazine? No, thank you. Cardi, why don't you find out what you can about the Terminators? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, run this Rico Navarro through the computer, see if something comes up. Yeah. Oh. The car turned up abandoned a few blocks away from the church. Anything on the ownership? I checked it out. It was in for repairs at Skip's Auto Body over on King Street. Uh, they reported stolen earlier right. today. That is something, right? Okay, Cole, when we cut this immediately loose. We'll go to Skip, see if they know anything about a hit and run. Hey, while we're at it, maybe they can do something about my door. Can I help you, Father? Is Lieutenant Hogan in? He should be back in a few minutes, Father. No, oh, that's all right. I'm here to pick up Emilio Sada, if you finish with him. He's right over there, ready to go. Don't worry, Emilio. The police will find out who did it. No, that's where you're wrong, Father. The police don't give a damn. Emilio. Excuse me, are you waiting for someone? Lieutenant Hogan. OK, he won't be long. Look, we're just finishing up this job and going home. Can you come back tomorrow? I'm afraid not. Police. It's about the car that was stolen from your lot last night. Look, I told your guys earlier. When I locked up last night, the car was here. When I came in this morning, it was gone. Look, if Wallace is trying to say I pulled a fast one with his car... It is not about that. The car was involved in a homicide this evening. Yeah, we want to know if you have any idea who might have stolen that car. Damn gangs. Always hanging around. Usually just go for the... Stereos and hubcaps. Yeah, any in particular or just kids in general? They pretty well take what they want around here. Okay, thanks very much. We got anything else? We'll pay a call. Call me. Who was the one to see me? 
Lieutenant Hogan? I did. What can I do for you? Could I speak to you in private, if possible? Let's talk in my office. Sit down. If I had known I was uh, waiting for such a pretty young lady, I don't think I would have taken so long. Did I say something funny? No, not really. It's just that you're as charming as I always thought you would be. As you thought I'd be? <laughs> Am I supposed to know you? No. I suppose I have the advantage of you. Now, look, uh, I had a pretty rough night. And uh, I, I, I'm not trying to be rude. But I'm really not in the mood for playing games. So if you uh, don't mind telling me who you are. My name is Simone Poirier. I'm your daughter. What do you mean, my daughter? Mood for playing games. This is no game, Lieutenant. But I can understand your confusion. Let me show you a picture. Perhaps you recognize the young soldier? He cuts quite a dashing figure in his uniform, don't you think? Fresh from his duties with the UN peacekeeping forces in Korea. Still recuperating from his wounds. I recognize him. And the woman with him? They make a lovely couple, don't they? That shop here. Now, where'd you get this? She's my mother. I was born ten months after the picture was taken. Damn, Ronnie should have been back 20 minutes ago. It's a simple drop. Yo, Rico, he ain't dumb enough to cross you, man. I decide when to worry, man. Damn, understand? what are you doing? Yo, watch it, man. Where are you going? Please, stay where you are. Very fancy car. Rico. Looking all over for you, you're a hard man to locate. Not so hard. Been right here all night. That's not we here. We hear you've been doing some joyriding. Maybe you're wrong. Ask around. Guys? Hey, 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 hey. Right up against that car. Oh, God. You're stupid enough to be holding there. Those hands where I can see them. What is this? You're pretty man? stupid, Rico. What is this? This is about Alice Miller. The bitch oh, broke with us a long time ago, man. Yeah, well, that's not a very good reason to kill her. Kill her? <laughs> Are you crazy? I ain't seen her in years. You want to know what happened to her? Ask the Holy Rollers over at the church. Yeah, we did. That's why we're here. They told you I did it? They're really nuts. Well, maybe, but we're gonna find that out, aren't we? You're not finding out nothing, man. You want to talk to me again, you're damn well gonna have yourselves a warrant. Or I'm gonna get me a lawyer. Let him go, Frank. Everything was fine. And then one day, uh, she disappeared. No message, no forwarding address. I know. When she found out she was pregnant, she knew you would want to marry her. And that would mean leaving the country. She had a decision to make. And it didn't include me. It wasn't easy for her. Did she ever marry? A doctor, Henri Poirier. He married my mother when I was three years old. It's been quite wonderful, just as if... As if he was your real father. I guess your real father... Uh, <laughs> ...hasn't been a lot of good to you. Don't say that. You had no idea. She loved you, you know. She used to tell me marvelous stories about you, the two of you. And she kept up with what you were doing. 
I sometimes thought that if she had the decision to make... I'm sure she made the right decision. Perhaps. Does your mother know that you've come to see me? Oh, when I found out she was coming to this country, I forced her to bring me here. Oh, speaking of mother, I was supposed to meet her for dinner. Could you join us? Well, you know, uh, I'm, uh, I'm kind of tied up. I, uh, I got a homicide, and I said, uh, I took, we're right in the middle of the thing. I understand. Can I see you again? Tell you how happy I am to finally meet you. Well, I hope it was worth your wait. Oh, you're everything I expected, and more. Haven't you guys got some work to do or something? You know, everything I hope for, and more. <laughs> for a change. <laughs> You're gonna tell me who's in that car and run down me and Alice. What I'm gonna do is walk, man. The Terminators weren't too helpful either. All we got was their name, rank, and serial number. Gonna have a hard time making it stick on those guys. A hard time or not, if it's them, we're gonna make it stick. Kevin. Uh, come into the office for a minute, will you? What is it? Well, something just happened. About the case? No. <laughs> no, about me. It's got me all shook up. Sit down. What is it? Girl just walked in the door and told me that I was her father. Is she for real? Well, you know, I, I was skeptical my, myself, but uh, at first, and then all the pieces fell in. I mean, it's all there. What does she want? Nothing. I don't know what she wants. Well, maybe it's a good idea if you found out. Does, uh, Ellen know? Ellen? Are you kidding? Hey, Jim, do you want to go to Nikki's? Get a beer? We'll talk about it? Yeah. Lieutenant, somebody here to see you. Is there any more of your family we should know about? Jim! What's wrong, Father? It's Emilio. He's gone crazy. He's trying to deal with the Terminators all by himself. Kevin, Frank, get some men out in the street. We gotta find them before they do. I think we're too late. A radio car just found him down on Blicker Street. It sounds like he's in pretty bad shape. How bad, Father? He's in a lot of pain. They'll be taking him in for more x-rays. Is he talking? Only about revenge. Go on in there, see what you can get. I'll clear with the doctor. You want to tell me what's on your mind? Hmm? Come on, Jim. I know you well enough to know you didn't come down here to watch over your detectives. Well, there are some things about me, Father, that you don't know about. Things I've just found out myself. Emilio, is there anything you can help us with on this? Why don't you just tell us what happened? We'll get the hell out of here. 
I don't need no cops to deal with this. I can handle it myself. Yeah. Now look at yourself. This is what happens when you try to deal with things your way. Hey, I didn't kill Alice. Nobody said you did. But you are the only one who can help us out with this now. I got blindsided by a car. That's all I know. What kind of car? Who's driving? I don't know. Last thing I remember was the headlights. And I woke up here. So nothing you saw proved it was Rico or any of the gang? I don't need to see it to know who did it. Who else is going to do me like this? OK, Emilio. If you remember anything, you give us a call, all right? Hey, I ain't going to turn the other cheek no more. You understand? If he's out on the street when I get out there, I'm going to bury him. Stranger, that you suddenly find out is your own flesh and blood. The important thing is you didn't turn your back on it, Jim. How do you explain to your wife that after 20-something years of wanting a daughter, you have one? Only it's not exactly the way you want it. The sooner you tell Ella. It's not an easy thing to do. I don't know how she'll take it. After living with you for 25 years, she'll handle it. It won't be easy. No easier than it is on you. I feel all turned inside out. Like a jigsaw puzzle. Suddenly find an extra piece. How's it all gonna fit? Everybody thinks the priest has all the answers. The trick is to let the people find their own answers, then take the credit. <laughs> I hope I can do that. It's the same M.O. as whoever killed Alice. Hit and run, no idea on the vehicle. Emilio says it's the tease. Maybe. Check it out. Just make sure you got a backup. I don't like it, man. It's too much heat. Heat passes, man. We just stay cool. Nothing touches us. Uh, maybe. this out of the upholstery of your fancy car. He must have cast his paycheck. Nah, nah, he'd have to have a job for that. Unit 1209. Want to send a wagon? Parliament Gerard. Got a full load. Oh, Jim, how come you're home? I got to talk to you. What is it? Something happened? Yeah, something happened. Not very easy to explain. I've seen that look before. What is it? It's a long story. Well, then get to the point. I might want to be spared the details. A girl. Walked into the station tonight. And she said that she was my daughter. Is she? I knew a woman who was her mother. Now, this, this was before we met, when I was overseas. How old is she? 20s. It's taken you that long to 
break the news? I never knew about her until today. I wanted to tell you as soon as I could. I mean, this, this whole thing was over even before we met. If it was just a thing, you wouldn't be here telling me you have a grown daughter. I'm not perfect. But I've never done anything to hurt you. Say something. What do you want me to say? Congratulations? I'm thinking... What would have happened if you'd known about this all those years ago? I can't say. All I know... is that all the time that we've been together... I've never had one minute of regret that I ever married you. What's her name? Simone. What's she like? I don't know. Well, nice. <laughs> she, she's really a stranger to me. Is she pretty? She's pretty. Like her mother. Tell you the truth, I... I'm not sure I even remember what her mother looked like. You're a liar, Jim. Kind, but a liar. Are you going to see her again? I don't know. I hope so. I... I think I'm gonna need some time to digest all this. Yeah. All night to be jacking me up. This ain't about nothing but police harassment. It's about homicide and attempted homicide. How's that? I don't know nothing about it, man. Yeah? Then it's about the two grand from under your seat. Something's gonna stick. Believe it. You see, somebody ran a ton of Detroit steel over Emilio tonight. Any idea who? Emilio and the T's ain't been tight for years. Yeah? Well, maybe you don't take too kindly when one of your members leaves the fold. Don't get to me, none. There's a whole lot of homeboys wanting to be joining with the T's. We got the best rep on the streets. What about Alice, Rico? Hmm? You didn't like it when she got kind of close to Emilio, did you? Kind of made you look soft. My chicks don't think I'm soft. Depends on where they're looking. And when you get soft, people catch on. Right, Frank? Yeah. They even help the cops out. Uh... I ain't telling you squats. Yeah. Well, we know that. And you know that. But your gang out there, they don't know that. They're gonna be thinking that you're sitting in here singing a long, sweet song, Rico. <laughs> Never happened. You know, we got lots we can rap out on you. And suddenly, you just walk out of here. Some of them are gonna think that you rolled over. What's that gonna do for your street rep, Rico? You like that? defender in my office who's screaming about holding these kids without charges. Wayne, we may be able to get something out of these bucks. We just need a little more time. You don't have anything at all? Yeah. We got the money. How else would a punk like Rico have two grand if he wasn't dirty? That won't stick. You know that. Excuse me. Uh, what about the attack on Amelia? 
Well, we don't have anything yet. That's why we need a little more time. I can't stall the lawyer if you don't give me something to stall him with. All right, we will let all of them go except Rico. How's that? I'll give it a shot. Go. We're going to cut everybody loose except Rico. We'll let them all cool their heels till the paperwork's done. If nothing else, then we'll give the citizens a few hours of peace. Oh, go. When you're stringing them, try and make them think that they're getting out because Rico. <laughs> and why do you think this gang would care if it lost a couple of its members? O'Malley's making some real headway. Show the kids alternatives. Yeah, for every hundred kids in a gang gets one, maybe. So what's the answer? More police, more O'Malley's. Well, both wouldn't hurt. What about jobs? Give a kid a job, get some money, gets a little pride in himself. No, no, that's what the gang's offering. Money, pride. You know, when we were young, we had to go to school. We had to have respect for our parents doesn't seem to be very important anymore. Yeah, well, why don't you put that in your column, Tom? Yeah, maybe I will. Maybe I hey. will. I have to find somebody to read it to you. I have to fall asleep somehow. Hey, Lieutenant. How nice to see you here. Wow. Wow. You ever seen a good-looking woman in here before? Not with a Lieutenant. I was so nervous about meeting you. You were afraid I... Wouldn't be what you expected. I guess I thought you wouldn't want to see me or wouldn't like me. Simone, if I had known. But you didn't. Let's just get to know each other without all that. Uh... Excess baggage. Hi, Jim. What can I get you? Well, I think you could get us a bottle of the best because we're celebrating. Sure. And Nikki, uh, could you bring the boys over? Okay. Kevin, Frank, he wants to see us. Thank you for making me feel so welcome. I want to do what I can. Would you like to see my mother before we leave? <laughs> Just to see the two of you together. I've drawn the picture take so many easy. times. Take it easy. Uh, I've had enough big shocks for one day. Yeah, good. Uh, <laughs> uh, Nikki? Tommy? This is Kevin, and this is Frankie. This is Simone. She's my daughter. See y'all tomorrow. A six o'clock sharp. And no partying tonight. Take your money, Come on. Trip on your leotards. Hey. Thanks to the alibi, man. Fleming goes down. You had us locked up. Hey, don't push your luck, Rico. Come on, you don't got a thing on us. Let's get out of here. Let's hit the streets. We'll be back. Count on it. With our lawyer. We was confined, harassed. Hey, you ain't seen nothing yet, huh? I'm threatened, huh? Yo, father. Who are you looking for a new coach? I might just be available. Get up before I put you out. Hey. Damn, I'd love to lose my foot up in the office. For... Uh, We're back to square one. I don't know. It could still be one of those creeps. We didn't get them all. Yeah, we had a pattern. Alice and Amelia were gang members who turned and gone straight. And Alice was Rico's girl when she was with the T's. Now, when she left the T's, she went over to Amelia. Yeah, so Rico had a personal grudge. Fleming doesn't fit the pattern. Maybe there's more than one killer. No, I don't buy that. 
All three were hit and run victims. And they all knew each other, so there's a pattern. We were working on the wrong pattern. They we're all part of the same Martha's community. No, I don't think St. Martha's has any enemies. That's including the Terminators. Well, if the T's didn't kill Father Fleming, then there has to be some other link. Uh, we were so close. Just like one family. And we tried so hard to make it work. All right, you said Alice helped out with the games, yeah? That's right. She drove the team to the away games. But was there any, any, any trouble any of these games that involved Alice, or Emilio, or Father Fleming. Nothing special, just kid stuff. There was that car accident. Well, go on, Father. Yeah, it was a year and a half ago. Around Christmas. Alice was driving. It was snowing. A car skid into us. The driver was killed. Just a kid, 16 years old, plus his soul. Alice was accused of negligence at the inquest. By who? The police? No, by the boy's father. He said she was drunk or on drugs. Bull. Well, she was proven innocent, but it was very upsetting for Alice and all of us. Yeah. So I want to see you, Lieutenant. Oh, I can see you're busy. Uh, no, no, Helen, come on in. Sit down. We are uh, finished with him. Nice to see you, Mrs. Holman. Right. Ellen, uh, you remember Father O'Malley? Oh, I heard about Father Fleming. I'm so sorry, Father. Thank you, Ellen. Well, Jim, if you need me for anything, I'll be at home or else at the hospital with the kid. Thanks, Jeremy. I won't stay long. I know how busy you are. Well, there's uh, nothing I'm doing that can't wait. Do you want to go somewhere else? I'm not here to take you away from your work, Jim. I just wanted to tell you it's all right. The way I reacted before. I wasn't angry, just... in shock, I guess. I love you, Helen. Maybe this will be good for both of us. Shake us up a little. It's Simone and her mother. They're leaving tomorrow. Now, if, uh, if you'd like to meet them. Oh, I don't know. They belong to your past, not mine. Maybe it'll be better to just leave it that way. place could use a good coat of paint. Yeah. Okay, Tommy, thanks. Yeah, I'll keep you informed. Well, Tommy ran the inquest through his files. Turns out the kid's father was a mechanic. Guess where he worked? Skips auto body. That's where the car that killed Alice Miller was stolen from. Yeah, we're gonna pay him a call. Tell the tenant we'll be on the radio. You got it. Larwin? Yeah, he works here. At least I thought he did. He hasn't shown up since you guys were here. Well, did he call in, uh, give a reason? Uh, to be honest, I'd be just as happy if he didn't show up at all. Well, how's that? Well, you know, if a guy loses a kid, it's a terrible thing. But you gotta go on living. I mean, Ken just sort of stopped. You could tell it was eating away at him all the time. You don't wanna be too tough on a guy, but he was getting weird. Can you give us an address on Larwin? Please open up. Check that one. Obsessed, all right. But enough to kill. Maybe he is obsessed. 
just enough to kill. Look at this, Frank. Alice Miller, Emilio Sarda, Chuck Fleming. Three down and one to go. Here's O'Brien, get me Lieutenant Fast. Jim is Kevin. Larwin's our man. He's going after O'Malley next. Yeah, we'll be right there. Uh-huh. Let's go. He's on his way to the hospital. He could be there already. Cheat you eventually. I don't care what they do to me. I'm coming back. And I'm gonna get you too. All right. The police are lying. He's beyond your help now. It's said that the keys to life are luck and timing. In sports, it comes down to seconds and inches. A basket scored, a touchdown made. A game can change in a fraction of a second. So can a life. One man loses a son, another finds a daughter. Is one man cursed, the other blessed, or is it just blind luck? <laughs> Do you have any plans to come back? Anything's possible. Yeah, I found that out. <laughs> Maman. Javier, you haven't changed since the last time I saw you. We both have. Two years haven't been too unkind. I suppose not. I'm so glad you and Simone met. Your Hoshi's talked about for days. <laughs> I'm glad too. It's beautiful. It was good to see you, Jim. If only for such a short time. No. We do. Hogan here. Well, good news for you, Jen. We just hit the Terminators, caught him with enough stuff to even keep Elaine happy. It's good. It's good work, Kevin. You coming on in? Ah, oh, no. Nah. You handle it yourself. I think I'll just get on home. Okay. 